Good evening, everyone. Chris Schultz, along with Gary Hoff again, FridayNightVictors.com. We are here to talk about our week three playoff picks, predictions, preview, whatever we want to call it. Mm -hmm. Gary, how you doing today? Doing wonderful. Big week of football ahead, regional finals. and uh, You yeah. seem excited. Sure. I'm always okay. excited. All right. Yeah. Well, before we get started, why don't we give a shout out to our sponsors who sponsored us this year. Uh, they've been great to us. We appreciate everything they've done. Gary? Yeah, our sponsors kind of allow us to do this. Our wives would, I know at least my wife would really question why we were putting so much time into this without our sponsors. So right. thank you. Uh, to Quality Inn uh, over in Monroe, on, on, in Monroe on, on, uh North Dixie, just off I-75, cleanest rooms in town, and uh, excellent pricing as well. So thank you very much, Quality Inn. Thank you to Larson's Bar and Grill, and the best burger in town. Man, they, I love those burgers. Yeah, yeah, they've won that award many times. Man. So that's uh, there's no fabrication there. The best burger in town, and if you go there during lunch, you can see Donnie himself whipping up the burgers. And uh, yeah, ice cold beer too. That's that's no lie. They're literally the coldest beer in town. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, so thank you to Larson's Bar and Grill. We even did a show from there one time. So again, thank you very much, Larson's Bar and Grill. And little Vinny's, Vince's West Elm. Excuse me, Vince's driving in Newport. And uh, thank you to Jeff for sponsoring us as well. Um, Gerwick Nissan. Gerwick Nissan. He bought a car from him. Yeah, I bought a car from, from Gerwick Nissan. So thank you to John and all the people over there at Gerwick Nissan. And like I said, th these shows couldn't be done without you. We couldn't put as much time into it if we couldn't justify it with our bosses. With our bosses. Yeah. That is correct. Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, level, level, up. Up, level Up Training. Yeah, Level Up Training, John Carabino. Um, Total Sports in Monroe. Total Sports in Monroe does a heck of a job training athletes and even some non-athletes, uh, like maybe you and me anymore, wanting to just lose weight or get in better shape. So thanks to Level Up. Okay. Well, thanks, Gary, for yeah. that. Uh, let's dive into our games. Let's touch on the games. Uh, first of all, the game that you will be at, yeah. which would be the 7-4 and four Monroe SMCC Falcons traveling to the undefeated 11-0 and 0, uh, Madison Heights. Madison. The Eagles. The Eagles. Thoughts yeah. on this game, Gary? Well, these are two, just like last week with Hudson, two kind of perennial playoff powers. Um, Madison Heights has never, you know, I haven't really looked, but I don't think they've been to Ford Field, but they have been to a lot of regionals. I think some state semifinals, if I'm... They've been to the playoffs 13 consecutive yeah. years. I mean, they have a nice program. They did. They have been, they were to the final, been to the finals in 2006, and they, they lost to Mononymy, but... So they they have a lot Menominee? of influence. Menominee, whatever it is, what is it? Menominee, Men Menominee, right? It's up there somewhere, way up north. Very the good, Maroons, very good program are the Maroons, but the Eagles of Madison, they're a very good program as well. It's basically what I'm getting at. So, yep. you know, out of the frying pan into the fire for the Falcons, but it's the playoffs, so that's kind of what you expect. You're going to see yeah. great teams mm -hmm. eventually, and Madison has a great team. Yes, and they're led by their quarterback, Austin Brown. Thoughts on Mr. Brown? Yeah. He transferred from Novi DCC, Catholic Central, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know, to Madison, where, which is where he lives, and his father's the athletic director there. We get that. Mm -hmm. But here is a kid coming from a big-time Division One program, coming down to a Division Seven program that has had great success, and now they bring a college quarterback who can fling it, run it, throw it, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Uh, last week he was... You know, he did everything against Riverview, Gabe Overshard, in a game I believe ended up 47-0. to zero. Uh, what, what can SMCC do to, to stop a player like him? It's not like, listen, CC has a history, especially in the playoffs, of playing great quarterbacks. Yes. Uh, so this is no different. Thoughts? Well, you talk about great quarterbacks. They played against Niznak of Ithaca. They played against Cater of Montague oh, and yeah. Smith of Ithaca. And they faced others uh, that are really good as well. Those would be the three best, and this guy in, in uh, Brown would be just another one. Yep. And how do you stop them? Well, you, SMCC, I think, would rely on ball control. Yep. Keep first him, and foremost, first I would and think. First and foremost, keep him off the field. Mm -hmm. That's what SMCC does best. We've talked about this. They, they do their typical drive, and if you're a throwing team that likes to put up 40, which Madison is, Madison does run the ball. Mm -hmm. They are. They do have a power running game with some big offensive linemen, but they, they are – 
And if I look at their uh, schedule, they're accustomed to scoring 54, 44, 61, 42, you know, 47. So they, they put up a lot of points, and they haven't given up a lot of points. Their highest point total given up has been 24. And that was to Marine City. Marine City. So they're very good on defense as well. So they're just a great team. And, you know, how do you keep them off the field? Control the ball. Their SMC is what they do best. They do their four-down football, run nine minutes off the clock. You're down 7 nothing, haven't been on the field. And if you go three and out or, or, or something to that nature – and SMCC has another long drive. I think you start to look at the clock. You start to look at the at your coach. You know, this isn't how, how we normally play. And it can just kind of change the way you play or your mindset. And I think that's SMCC's best chance. Okay. Some players to look out for. Obviously, Austin Brown, who, who is a six foot one, 190-pound junior. He's thrown for over 2,000 yards. I think now it's like 28 touchdowns he's thrown for. Uh, he's got a great receiver who's a senior, Zaire Krosky, with over... Uh, 600 yards receiving. Uh, they have a very good middle linebacker by the name of a uh, kid by the name of Dominic Roll and uh, a junior defensive end by the name of Chauncey Ernest. Another player to look out for is Darren Hood Jr., who is a defensive tackle, a big kid. So these are some players that uh, you know fans should look out for in this game. But on the other side, uh, tell us a little bit about the SMCC players. You cover them, obviously. Sure. Get, throw some players out there who have stood out this year. I mean, well, you, we've talked about them in the past, but let's talk about it now. We have a few minutes to discuss yeah. this. Well, the, the offensive line is doing a heck of a job. Um, Hudson was giving it everything they could. They put their big kids on the line, defensive line, uh, to try to stop the run, obviously. Momentum started to change in that game last week, and uh, – started going Hudson's way when they tied it up they got the two-point conversion 16-16 mm -hmm. Uncle Mo was on Hudson's side but the offensive line turned that around on that last drive completely turned it around and uh, guys like Briggs Hale the junior mm -hmm. and uh, Sam Cusimano or Cusino excuse me not an offensive lineman but played as an offensive lineman like a tight end on that left side Griffin Vujic cast on his arm I don't remember which arm it is right or left Obviously, don't remember which one, but he's got a big old cast on one of his arms. He's out there playing. Is he and out there clubbing people? He's with clubbing it people. Yeah, right. he's playing tight end, and uh, even caught a pass. He even caught a twelve-out pass for a first down right in the first quarter. Nice. So Griffin Vujic, broken arm, still out there giving it a go, and that's what football's all about. And uh, who else? Jared Fleck, okay, the center. Uh, everything starts with him. The guards, Martin Goda, and they're not big. Those Martin and Goda, maybe one hundred and eighty pounds. Sure. But they get they're, they're shorter. They get into people. They drive. They use their technique. That's what the T's all about: technique and uh, positioning. But this game's probably going to come down to a little bit of defense, though, too. Yeah, defense. And if you know, I was talking to uh, my buddy Tim Marino. We talk about the games and whatnot. And I, I was telling him that you know, if Madison decides to pass the ball, and they will pass, uh, even if they're running somewhat effectively, they will throw the ball. Um, Gus Flint. Gus Flint from his defensive end slash linebacker, mainly defensive end position, has a real knack of getting in to the quarterback. Um, every game we see, every team that likes to pass, you see Flint in there three or four times a game with either a sack or fumble, uh, causing a fumble or uh, whatever, a pressure to cause a bad pass. Mm -hmm. He has a real knack for getting to the quarterback. So I look out for a big game from Flint, number 20. He's a sophomore. And also, we mentioned Cousineau, the sophomore again. A lot of youngsters on this team. Mm -hmm. uh, let's mention some seniors. Mitchell Duval, Mitchell Sherrard, the Mitchells, mm -hmm. right? They kind of look the same out there. They play the same. They're both hard-nosed kids. And, um, you know, you can't tell them apart sometimes for me, unless they're for the number. One's 34 and one's 4. Mm -hmm. So Sherrard and Duval, tough-nosed kids. And uh, Wolford, he's the, he's the workhorse of this team, both, both sides. Sure. And uh, defensive lineman. Uh, Bugdan, or Mason Gullen and Hale's out there a lot on defense as well. So, okay. um, you know, they're going to have their hands full. You've got to stop run and pass. Right. So defensive backs are going to have to uh, cover well. Linebackers are going to have to get deep and need to get deep, and they're going to have to come up and support the run when they need to do that. But uh, if, one, if the Falcons do one thing right, they play defense, and they have all year. So right. I, I, I anticipate that defense will show up. 
Okay, so here you go. I know you're an SMCC grad, yeah. and you are going to be the color man on the game. Mm -hmm. Give us your prediction. Wow. I didn't know we were predicting so early. Well, yeah, but we, we have to make a call on it, right? You don't have to say what score is. You just have to say who's going to win the game. Well, I'm not going to go against the Falcons. Okay. I'm not going to. And uh, I don't think you are either, either, but I don't know. I'm not going against the Falcons. The, the Huron League has prepared them. You know, you get on the blog, all these people comment. You know, the Heron League's very good this year. People yeah. get over it. People, people, you know, the league's uh, these down, old school blah, blah, people. Blah. Oh, it was better ten years ago. I'm telling you, top to bottom, it was very good this year. Get past that. SMCC is only good because of Division Seven. Well, that's their enrollment, people. Sorry. I would have loved to have seen Carlson have to play the Heron League schedule this year. Right, that'd have been interesting. I, I, it would have yeah. been interesting. Yeah, it would have yeah. been interesting. So, you're but, going. So you're going with CC. I'm here. going. I'm going Go with the Falcons. I'm going with the Falcons. I just think they are playing. Very, very well. Mm -hmm. And Madison Heights, Madison has not seen the T, I don't think, this year. Marine, Marine City does run some of the wing T, but they don't run it like SMCC does. Not the same. And uh, I, I, I think SMCC is going to do just enough to frustrate Madison, and um, the Falcons will make some plays when needed. Okay. I am, uh, I'm going to go the other way. I, I think Madison, you know, they're 11-0 for a reason. Uh, I just don't think... CCC is a quarterback like this. It's they're few and far between, and I think the difference in the game will be the quarterback from Madison Heights. Madison, uh, I think it'll be a close game, but I think ultimately Madison Heights wins this game. Okay. All right. So let's dive into our our next game. I got to get the glasses out here so I can read a little bit because I'm half blind. Uh, but we have uh, ten and one Riverview yep. champions of the Huron League. They will be traveling to Divine Child to play the 10-1 Falcons of Divine Child. Uh, two teams that couldn't be more different. You have one that's extremely physical and uh, will run the tee, and then they're very good defensively. And then you have another team who has a couple of a Division I uh, commitments on the field. They're going to run uh, out of the shotgun spread. Their quarterback's going to throw it half the time. He's going to run it half the time. Uh, thoughts on this game, Gary? Why don't you talk about? Uh, why don't we talk about Riverview a little bit first? Yeah. Talk about some players there. Obviously, we know Cam Rogers is out for the game mm -hmm. because of his uh, his broken collarbone. Collarbone, collarbone that he has. But talk about some other plays, players. Obviously, we talk about Dom Wood a lot. Their quarterback. He's just. I think the kid's just a winner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He is. Some some kids are just winners. We we had one at SMCC in Wyndham. A uh, few years back. A few years back. Just, they just know how to win games, and, mm -hmm. and I think Wood's one of them. Uh, Tyler Dively, talking about their defense. Stephen Rice, mm -hmm. Dively, uh, Naif as well. Yeah. Um, I'd throw Cass Saranaki in there. Saranaki. Uh, you know, big kid on the defensive end yeah. position. They're, gonna, they're going to have – it's a little bit like the games, SMCC in this game are, are a little bit similar in the fact that you know, SMCC and Riverview both run the tee, and the teams they play uh, can throw the ball. They have excellent quarterbacks. So we're going to talk about uh, Dearborn's, Divine Child's quarterback. But so the defense for Riverview is going to have to step up. They probably haven't seen a team like Divine Child all year. The closest one would be Flat Rock, who they lost to, which is kind of an interesting thing. So the defense is going to have to step up. Step up. Riverview has... As a collection, as a team, they are just so They don't good. have a weakness. No weakness. I don't, know know. How to, I don't know how to say it other than they're just, everybody, everyone on that team contributes, and it's a total team effort. And the one thing you might be able to say is they're not very fast, mm -hmm. but I would argue after watching them against Carlson last week, who has some great athletes who can really run, Riverview is fast enough. Mm -hmm. They're as oh, yeah. fast as they have to be defensively. Uh, I think on the offensive end, it's going to be a lot like the CC game. They're going to have to control the time of possession, limit the possessions for Divine Child uh, yeah. to stay in this game. Uh, with that said, why don't we jump over to uh, some of the Divine Child players. Uh, you know, Divine Child won the Catholic League this year. They've got some quality wins. They've beaten teams like East Lansing, who's still alive in the playoffs. Cranbrook, who's still alive in the playoffs. They beat Ann Arbor Gable Richard twice. Uh, AGR lost to Elginac in the first round of the playoffs, mm -hmm. who we've talked about. Uh, the Falcons have a little bit of a uh, 
playoff history. Why don't you tell us about that a little bit, Gary? Well, yeah, Dearborn Divine Child is uh, for in the '80s. Uh, they were kind of a powerhouse. Uh, yeah, they, they, they won a state title in the mid '80s at some point, '85, '85, like that. Yep. Um, the 21 and nine all time in the in the playoffs, which is an outstanding. Yeah, this playoff is their twelfth playoff appearance. 12th playoff appearance. They did win a state title in the inaugural season of the state playoffs back in 1975. They've won two state titles. They went to the semis last year to where they were uh, ultimately demolished, probably to, crushed by Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the semifinals, and and you know the Eaglets went on to win the state title by beating Muskegon. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the players on the team. I think the first person you have to talk about when it comes to Divine Child, uh, I don't know if this is his nickname, but I think you got to call him Big Play Theo Day, mm. six foot five quarterback. He's dual threat. He is going to play for the Michigan State Spartans next year. And watching film on him, he flings it all over the place. He's big, tall, fast. Uh, he's going to run the ball as well. He is going to uh, pose problems for. Uh, the Pirates of Riverview. Yeah. Thoughts yeah. on this? Yeah. Riverview's going to have to get a rush. They're going to have to get a pass rush, mm -hmm. and um, they're going to have to look at their film maybe against Flat Rock. I mean, and coaches are going to do whatever they can to prepare. They're going to look at the teams that they've played like Divine Child mm -hmm. and uh, see what they did right, see what they did wrong in that game. I'm rather sure uh, Coach McLaughlin's watched that Flat Rock game, wondering how they lost that and, and tried to uh, you know, remedy – whatever went wrong in that game. So this is kind of interesting that they're facing another team that um, can run, can throw, and, and do all that. Uh, so they're just going to, you know, a good pass rush and, you know, get the hands in the face. I know he's six foot five his day, so it's going to be tough to... Yeah, and uh, athletic as heck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some... some it's, a, it's a tough matchup, but for both teams it's a tough matchup. It really is. Yeah. And, and other players on offense you need to look out for, senior running back Marcus Owen. Uh, you've got wide receiver, 6'6", six, six, Quinn Blair who's uh, extremely athletic. He was a quarterback for a while, and he switched over to receiver. He is committed to William & Mary for basketball, mm. so he's a kid who's super athletic. They've got some big kids on the offensive line, Daniel uh, Swiatkowski and uh, Jacob Sabo. They're both big kids, you know, 270, 280-pound kids. Uh, let's dive into the defense, this defense from the Falcons that's going to try and stop the T, and it is led by University of Michigan commitment uh, Aiden Hutchinson, who is six foot five, two hundred and thirty-five pound defensive end. He also is a big target offensively from his tight end position. Uh, thoughts on the U of M commitment here I, and I, Hutchinson? That's a name that I haven't seen. You know, yeah, right, uh, U of right. M fans should recognize. Sure, yeah. his father played at Harbaugh at, at Michigan. Harbaugh likes to recruit ends, tight ends, and defensive ends. They sure. have a ton of them, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he's just going to be another uh, in, in the long line there of Hutchinson's. Sure. Uh, players you need to look out for as well, senior linebacker, actually two of them, uh, Cameron Smith and, and Will Duran. They're both about 6'1-ish, 215, 220. You've also got defensive lineman and uh, Aaron Latham. Uh, they play an extremely tough schedule. They are 10-1. They are Their lone loss was a 52-14 to uh Lost to, to, to Warren yeah. De La Salle, who is still still going in the Division yeah. Two playoffs. So uh, with that said, there's a little bit about both teams. Gary, you want to give us uh, a pick on who's going to win this game? Well, I talked to a few people around the state that do kind of what we do in some way, shape, or form. They have websites, and they were com completely surprised of the score of the Riverview Carlson game. Not so surprised at who won, mm -hmm. and I, we weren't either. But I, we were both kind of surprised at the physicality of Riverview, and we know they're physical. But you know, you just kind of think they're facing a Jack Jarmo team; they're going to be equally as physical. But they just weren't. Yeah, it wasn't, they, it wasn't, they, they weren't. Yeah. They weren't. So I think the Pirates are going to be continue the physical play. I think the word's out. I think everyone knows now Riverview's for real. A lot of these, you know, Division Three coming out of the Huron League typically doesn't do that great. I know Huron advanced to, to the semifinals. So the semifinals a few years ago. And Riverview has made a decent run uh, here and there as well. Um, but 
they kind of overlook the Huron League when you're talking about divisions. It, we do get overlooked. It's, sure, it's, I would it's agree a fact. Mm-hmm. And because uh, you know you got to have to play Mus- Muskegon or Ulster Lake St. Mary, so they're like, eh, Huron League, they're not going to come out of that area. I think I know where he's going with this. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I just I like I like Riverview. I, I just I'm not I'm not going to pick against them. They're they're a complete team, running backs, offensive linemen, quarterback, great defense. Divine, well coached. Well coached. Divine Child might have. The better three, four, five players, but I think Riverview has the better 23, 30, whatever they have. And I think they find a way to win this game. I'm not going to pick against them. I think they have the recipe to slow down, um, just like SMCC is going to do, hopefully, to Madison. Ball control and just pound them, pound them, pound them. And I think that's what they're going to do going with Riverview. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Divine Child has their best team uh, in over a generation. Since 1985, last year's team went to the semifinals. They've got 20-some seniors. They've got the Division I commits, you know, the star power. Uh, they have some great football players. But I can tell you this, uh, I'm going to go with Riverview as well. Yeah. I, I love the way they play football. They just punch you in the mouth. Yeah. And if for some reason Divine Child wins this game, they'll just have to be a better team. Yeah. than Riverview because I don't think you're going to outwork Riverview. Nope. I don't. I, I just think, you know, their team is, if, if you get in an alley fight, yeah. these are the type of kids, mm-hmm. uh, at least the way they play football, yeah. these are the type of kids you want with you. And I'm going to go with Riverview as well. I, I'm not going to say that Divine Child, I don't want to use the word soft, I don't, I, of their program, but they... Over the years, I'm talking, let's say, last 10 to 15, maybe 20, they've kind of played, they don't play football or like, or, or with a rugged style as a Riverview does, or a rugged style that you're used to in the Huron League. They, they play a little bit of a softer brand, okay? That is, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it to be negative, but I just think they are susceptible to a, to, to a team that can punch you in the mouth like Riverview can, and I think they're going to, they're going to realize after the first quarter, after the first drive, wow. Yeah, and I'll, I, won't, I won't go as far as, mm-hmm. as to say that. I'll, I'll give a comparison. I think uh, Riverview's kind of like an Alabama-type mm. football. Mm. You know, right. They've got some talent. They're going to play hard. They're well-coached. They're physical. And I would say Divine Child is, is like a Clemson of last year. Well-coached, good athletes. Obviously, they won the national mm-hmm. championship. I think it's two really, really good football teams, just a different brand of football. All right? I'll agree with that. I'll go I, with that. Uh, I think that analogy. wraps it up for yeah. us. We probably need to stay under our time limit here. We're 23 minutes. Oh, on. man, we blew 23. it. 23. But uh, Gary can get talking. I but can bloviate with the best of them. Anyways, uh, I'll have headaches to deal with editing mm-hmm. this, but that's yeah. okay. We appreciate, appreciate everybody watching uh, hopefully we have teams playing next week yeah. and we can do this again next week. Uh, but from, from Gary's basement on a cold, wet, rainy night, uh, this is Chris and Gary, FridayNightVictors.com. We thank you for watching.